Don't be long now. I know I'll never grow up because I still have that kind of childish uh, feeling that it isn't fair. And when I think that something isn't fair, that's when I, I, I go to the typewriter and, and fight back. Jesus, don't! It was a scream of anger, really, from Alan, and a, a rather operatic picture of, uh, of hell. Oh. <laughs> when you consider at the time that Granada were convinced they were going to win the BAFTA for a brideshead, and then all of a sudden, you know, out of nowhere comes uh, Boys from the Black stuff. Have you got a job? Give us a job. Hey. I'll be all right if you had a job. Honest. Well, the irony about about the way in which the boys from the black stuff was perceived was that it was a a, a, a righteous and and virulent attack upon Thatcher's Britain. I'd be all right. Oh yes. The irony being that I wrote uh, four of the five episodes of the boys and the black stuff before Thatcher came to power. God save for once in your life! Why don't you stand up for yourself? He was in love with character, you know, and that's, you know, that's what people really remember about the boys and the black stuff. Kiss the job. Go on. Kiss it. Go ahead. A job? Yeah, kiss it. Go on, I know you've got one. Bill gives a job in. I'm not a complete fool. You always kind of look for something that, that is that is a touchstone that people can, you know, people can remember. You're not a bricky. I am. You're not. You can't be. Not if that's your best. I've laid bricks before. Anyone can lay bricks. Listen, son. The last time you laid bricks was when you had a Lego set. You're no good to me. Oh! Oh! The thing I love about Alan Bleasdale is he say uh, is that he takes you right to the edge of the precipice. I'm desperate, Father. <laughs> Call me Dan. And then he throws you over. I'm desperate, Dan. 